So in this video, we're going to do the steps of actually um, uh, creating a map with these points on it and then finally converting that into an animation. And, uh, and so I'm going to be over here on the City of Madison website because I have to look for the city limits like we've done before. And, uh, and this is a data set I can download like so. I can uh, right click and then grab that shape file copy link address. Um, if I wanted to do it, I could go to the terminal and I could do like a wget. Um, it turns out that if I want to, if I'm in, uh, in Jupyter, I can have any sort of bash command right here as long as I put an exclamation mark before it. And, and so I'm going to actually put this here. I'm going to say wget that, and I'm going to say dash capital O city.zip. I'm going to run that. That's trying to download that thing for me. And uh, so it's saved to the city.zip. And then I'm just going to delete this. That's kind of a one-time thing that I'm going to do. And so I'm going to say city equals geopandas.read file. And I want to read in zip slash slash city.zip. Very good. And I can say city.plot. And that looks great. OK. And maybe I'll make that um, kind of a lighter gray, right? Maybe 0 0.7. And I'm not trying to bother with the lakes for this video. OK, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to plot uh, these other points on top of it. So I'm just going to leave that there for now and uh, do this in another one. I want to grab my geo data frame that I got with all of the um, locations of these fire incidents and plot that on top of this one down here. Right? So I'm going to do this. And uh, right now that's giving me two different areas. Um, so what I'm going to do is on the first one, I'm going to capture uh, that value. And then down here, I can say, well, AX equals AX. And um, what, what you can see now is that, uh, and as I was trying to be alluding to before, a lot of these points are just wrong, right? There's some, maybe some erroneous data here. And, uh, but what I can do to actually get a reasonable map is I can look at the limits that I had up here, right? Uh, really, I think like this is the, the real city of Madison in this bottom right corner, and the rest is just spurious data. And, uh, and so I should do this. I should say ax.set x limit, and I want to go from negative 89.55 to negative 89.25. And um, is it set x lim? Maybe set x lim. There we go. That's a little bit better. And then the same deal with the y limb. It's kind of a weird tall map. AX that set, y limb. And I can go from uh, 43 to 43.175. I'm just kind of reading these numbers off here that I get for a reasonable map. And uh, that just lets me crop off all of these, um, these weird points. So maybe let me make this a little bit a lighter gray for my background. And then maybe I'll make these like... Um, I don't know, like red or something, right? So that, that seems great. And, uh, and so that's good. What I'd like to do now is to figure out how I can plot it uh, by day, right? How can I plot um, uh, kind of a specific day of data? And so if I look at my geo data frame, here's my geo data frame. Um, Maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to get the ones that start with September to kind of keep this uh, not too complicated, right? So maybe I'll say geo data frame uh, where the date that stir that starts with um, let's say uh, 09, right? So that's some of these, a few of them, and I, I could certainly just pull out those, right? So this will be like the September. September points. Let me look at that. And um, and then what I could do is if I'm just dealing with September, uh, I don't have to get complicated about parsing these dates. I don't want to make that part of this already complicated video. Maybe I'm just going to pull off what day of the month it is. All right. And so the way I can do that is I can say September uh, date, and then I could do a split on uh, well stir dot split like that and I get this thing and then I can try to pull out well that doesn't quite work right it's kind of like a list of that um, if I actually want to convert this to be multiple columns I have to pass in something called explode equals true and I do that is it explode or expand there we go and now I could actually say I want that one column 
so I can actually get the day of the month. Right, so I'm just going to put this back in. So I'm going to say September day equals that thing. And so then I'm kind of working with this nice little piece of data here. And, uh, and well, the one thing I'd like to do is actually make that an, as an int too. So I'm going to say as type um, int. And uh, you can see it's complaining to me. And the reason it's complaining is because right here, September is just a portion. It's kind of a slice of the bigger uh, data frame. And they're saying that when you take a slice of another data frame, they don't want you to add columns to it. Um, that kind of mucks around with the internal representation. Um, when I take this slice, I can uh, tell Andis to just make a copy of it, and then it'll just stop complaining, which is wonderful. And so here I go. I have all these different incidents that happened on different days. And um, and then you could imagine, well, I could create something that plots just a single day, right? So so let's do this. I'm going to say um, up here, I'm going to say like fig and ax equals um, plt dot subplots. And here I'm just going to use ax for everything, like that. And uh, let me try running that. It's not going to work because I haven't imported plot yet. Let me go way up to the top and do that. I'm going to say um from matplotlib import pyplot as plt and while i'm at it i'm going to say um from matplotlib uh, dot animation import func animation because i'm going to need it soon right so uh if autocomplete doesn't mess me up okay great so back down here running this thing <clears throat> and I have a nice map and uh, maybe what I like, like to do is I like to have something that says like you know plot a day and I'll pass in a day here and uh, what I'll do is I'll just filter it for September let me let me actually put all of this all of this after September right so here I have all my September stuff which is shorter and then after that I'm just going to plot it and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, well, what day in September do I want, right? So I'm going to say, instead of GDF dot plot everything, I'm going to say GDF, where GDF of the day uh, equals that, right? So so then I can do this kind of thing. I can say plot day, um, you know, let's plot 30. And that broke horribly. Um, why did that break horribly? I guess, was there not a day column? Y you know what I think my problem was, is that um, only the September data frame did I add this to, not the general one. So so really, I want to just be doing September everywhere. When I do that, great. So on September 30th, there were these two things. Like one of these was a lake rescue, and then I don't know what that one was. Maybe it was like a fire or something. Or I could do like, you know, 17, and then there were some other incidents. And uh, and that's all well, right? And and so you can maybe see that I've gotten very close to being able to actually um, uh, make my animation, right? Because I can just treat a frame number as a day, right? I can actually use this plot day thing as my um, func animation function, right? I can say func animation, and I can pass in, well, what figure do I want to use? That one. And uh, what function do I want to use? I want to use plot day. And then how many frames? How many frames do I want? Um, I want to have, uh, you know, I think it's something like 31, right? Or 31 days in, in September. And, uh, and and that's great, right? So it's going to call plot day for frame zero, which I guess is nothing, right? There's not, no day zero, which is fine, right? I mean, it's just a kind of an empty frame. And draw all the way up to 31. So let me do that. And uh, the geo data frame you were trying to plot is empty. Well, that's just kind of a silly warning, right? I guess this is empty. Maybe I'm going to say like um, uh, day data frame equals this, and I'll say if like the length of day data frame is greater than zero, um, then I'll actually actually plot it just so it's not so noisy. Okay, so what I want to do now is to actually have it plot all of them. I have to try to save this to something. So I can say like animation.to uh, 
HTML. Is it HTML5 video? Let me just see here. Um, I can say that too. I'm hitting tab here. Maybe I actually have to just say like dir. I forget what it's called. If I say that, it's going to show me all these different things I can do, such as to HTML5 video. That's what I was looking for. And so I'm going to say animation dot to HTML5 video. Remember that returns like a big HTML string. So I'm going to get that big HTML string and then I can show it like this. I can say HTML and then show it. And, and I guess to show it, what do I need to do? I need to say uh, from ipython.tor.display import HTML. So uh, why is it? It's not happy because I misspelled it. Okay, great. So I'm going to do that. And um, fingers crossed that we actually get a reasonable animation here. Uh, I'm not optimistic about how slow this is going. And, and, well, there we go, actually. Great, you can see the points are popping up as we go. Um, you, you can see like one problem, well, a couple problems, right? It's super fast. And one, like the points don't erase after they've shown. And, and so we've talked about some of these things before. I can say something like ax.clear uh, each time. And then down here, if I want, I can actually, um, let, let me actually not set the x limit each time. That's kind of weird, right? Um, I'm just gonna do that once at the beginning. Uh, down here, I can maybe set the interval to a little slower. Let's say like I wanna have like a half second per day. That should be like a 15 second video. And hopefully this is like a little bit more reasonable. All right, and so I have this nice video here and I can see, well, I guess there were some days where it was empty. You can see as they crop pop up as they go. Oh, maybe, okay. <laughs> Maybe it was a bad idea to set this up here. You saw that it was kind of changing size as, as we were drawing. So let's not do that. Let's do that after we do all our plotting because sometimes we plot out of range. Bad idea, not trying to do that. And then the other thing, remember, is that after I generate the HTML string, which I'm going to display, I should close the figure, right? So I get rid of this guy down here. Okay, so I think that this is actually going to finally be a good map fingers crossed let's run this and uh and then maybe i'll deliver on my promise of actually having an animated map based on data we stray from the web definitely one of the more complicated examples in this course but sometimes i think it's nice to see something that feels like a kind of an end-to-end -end project rather than a, a lot of smaller examples so thank you for bearing with me let me run that and then it keeps going and then i can see there's some other points and i think that was the end of the month and if I can mouse over down here, oh, not quite the end of the month yet. I think at the end there was like another lake rescue. Yep, there is a lake rescue, and then we're done. And uh, and I'll end it there. But you can imagine a lot of ways to polish this, right? It could be higher resolution. I probably want to get rid of the border around it. Um, I should probably have some text up here in the top left saying what day of the month it is. Um, all of these things are are things that I think you could do to improve um, the example. Okay, so I'll end it there.